but you exactly. gotta think about it especially when you start doing the research you go to the libraries there's most of the times there's always help at the library it's dedication too yes you for you to for definitely and it's not going to be something that you know you'll be done with in a week no mm. this is like a couple months to a couple year journey Good y'all, it's the Doom Machettes React, and we're back with another video. Who we got today, see? Today, we're back with another American reaction. Let's get Super it. excited about this video. If you're new to us and, and we're new, new to you, you, make sure you scroll down, hit, hit that, that subscribe, subscribe button, button, and turn on the post notification bell because we're, we're on the road to 200k. And we cannot get there without you guys, all right? Join the family. Without further ado, let's get into the video. Let's get it. Is you. And these are your ancestors, a huge pyramid stretching into the past and balancing right on your head. How many ancestors do you have? Well, you have two parents, four grandparents, and eight great-grandparents. Four generations back, your direct ancestors total 30. If we continue down this line, doubling every step, just 40 generations ago, we'd find a trillion ancestors all living at the same time, which is ridiculous. That's not only more people than have ever been alive, it's more stars than are in the Milky Way. Since our species came on the scene 200,000 years ago, there have been maybe seven or 8,000 generations of humans leading up to you. So where are all your missing ancestors? Clearly there's been some inbreeding. We're not talking banjo playing King of Spain, Cersei, Jamie inbreeding, but every family tree inevitably grows forks. Before Tinder, choices for mates were often limited to as far as you could walk. Even people like Charles Darwin and Albert Einstein married their first cousins. Yeah, yeah, I feel you, same face. Same because face. so many people with shared ancestors have reproduced, our number of actual ancestors is much smaller than what simple math tells us. If we replace that with fancy math, factoring in how people moved and lived and paired up, life expectancy, trade, geography, Genghis Khan, we find something interesting. Every human alive today shares a common ancestor in their family tree, and this person lived only around 3,000 years ago. That's right, next time you get in a fight with a stranger on the internet, just remember that you share the same great, 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 great... Bro, so out of one one million people down the ancestor tree, they may be related to someone I don't know. Right. <gasps> wow, that's a... whoa. Well, I mean, we all human. Of course, you know what I'm Some saying. Some people had to populate. We have to come some, from right somewhere, here. and they have to be someone who was that one person. Yeah, that's that's wild. No, you know what I'm saying. This is a um a thought that a lot of us don't necessarily think about, but he's thinking for us right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Shared ancestry. Because mm. some people just be like, no, we're different, <laughs> <laughs> and I want to stay different. Mm. <laughs> great great grandfather or grandmother but we don't know who that person was the math tells us they must have existed but they didn't leave fossils or artifacts or like a note or something though writing birthday cards for each of your 7.4 billion great 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 oh God. Great, great grandchildren would have been a nice gesture, but we all carry a record of our ancestors in our genes because DNA is copied over and over. Every so often, a mistake is written in. You know, how when you make a copy of a copy, it doesn't come out as sharp like that. But since most of our DNA can be changed without affecting how things work, many of these mutations slip through to the next generation. These genetic changes accumulate at a steady rate through time, so scientists can read them like a molecular clock and estimate how much much time has passed, and which changes individuals share tell us how closely or distantly related they are. Humans seem really different, but on a DNA level, we're remarkably similar. Groups of chimps in Central Africa living right next to each other show more genetic variation than we find in the entire human population. Now, this genetic similarity tells us that our species is new in the big scheme of things, and that at one point our population was small, maybe as few as 10,000 of us. To put that in perspective, that's only a third of your average Bruce Springsteen crowd. Sorry, boss. 
Today, any two humans only differ by about one out of a thousand DNA base pairs. But our genome is so big, that's still millions of single letter differences, or SNPs, for single nucleotide polymorphism. We tend to see combinations of these changes, chunks of SNPs, associated with different geographic locations. Now, companies that test your DNA ancestry, they read thousands of these single letter changes in your genome to make a sort of signature of your unique genetic variation. Then they compare your signature to thousands of reference individuals from various parts of the world, and do a bunch of fancy math to see which parts of your genome most likely came from certain geographic areas. My genetic results pretty much look like this. My ancestors on both sides of my family are from Northern Europe and Scandinavia, which explains my last name, why I'm tall, why I don't tan, and also why I carry more Neanderthal DNA than two-thirds of people. If you're confused why I have Neanderthal DNA, you should watch our last video. Now, I didn't find any surprises, but many people learn about ancestry they didn't know they had. Where we come from isn't always obvious on the outside, but DNA doesn't lie. Before using math, we identified an answer. Okay. So I think that's like a good place for us to, because on the channel we talk a lot about social issues, cultural issues, and we talk about race. Yeah. You know, because, you know, our ancestry and the history of our people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of times people ask us, what if they don't know their roots? Mm. One of the ways you can find it if you agree with the practice is DNA research, right. I mean, DNA testing. And the other one is, you know, just going to your family tree, right. geology research. So that's where you start if you want to know, okay? I feel that with the DNA research, well, testing, you won't get names. Mm -hmm. You'll get location. Yes. But with the family tree, if you're speaking with your family, your elders, you know, cousins, aunties, like if you really want to go that way with it, then you can really, like, probably hit like a, a, a ceiling or hit the lid mm -hmm. about how far back you can potentially go. Yes, that's you know what with family members though. Right, exactly. But you exactly. gotta think about it, especially when you start doing the research. You go to the libraries, there's, most of the times there's always help at the libraries. It's dedication too. Yes, you for you to, for definitely. And it's not gonna be something that, you know, you'll be done with in a week. No, mm. this is like a couple months to a couple year journey of finding all this stuff. So. You go to the courthouses, you look through old newspapers. Um, a lot of times the libraries keep archives of all that stuff. And, yeah, you just keep going. It yeah. Don't just stop at what your family knows. You, If you really want to find your roots, you you go through the newspapers and things. And some, you yeah, some people become so successful with finding their roots that they change mm -hmm. their whole name. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. And I, I want to leave with this comment because I don't want to talk too long. But, yeah. um... If you're in the United States, the Freedman Burroughs um, just released like a whole bunch of census um, for you to find things out on your own, especially, you know, like with the, what, what do they call it? Dang, what they call it? The slave rosters? Yeah, all that stuff. I can't think of the name right now, but yeah. Yeah. If y'all need more help, let me know. Send, yeah. us, a, send us a little email. We'll help y'all. <laughs> Not too long ago, that's related to all of us. But that person's genetic influence has been shuffled so much, it's invisible in our DNA today. Is there someone whose genes have been passed on, unbroken, to today? Some leftover fingerprint from the mother of everyone alive? That's a disciplined there family. Is. You have a 47th chromosome. It lives in mitochondria. The powerhouse of the cell. I didn't know. Okay, so we're doing that again. Mitochondria used to be free swimming. They have their own genetic material. Unlike your other 46 chromosomes, there's no shuffling when it's passed between generations. And what's more, all your mitochondria came from your mother's egg, not your father's sperm. They trace an unbroken line of ancestors, stretching back through every female in your family tree. By comparing the changes that have accumulated over millennia, we find the most ancient human mitochondrial DNA comes from Africa, where our species originated. We can even trace it back to one woman, about 150,000 years ago. Other Homo sapiens females lived alongside her, but only her lineage lives on today. All other Homo sapiens lineages are extinct. This is mitochondrial Eve, and every single one of us descend from her. In the truest sense, we really are family, even if we're just hundredth cousins or something. 
But our ancestry isn't just branches stretching into the past. It's also a tree that extends into the future. Today we have more power to mold that future down to the genetic level than we've ever had before. So what might our species' future look like? Next time. Stay curious. Hey, I don't know how far back I will ever want to go though. Like that's <laughs> different, bro. Like to really know. Yeah, to go all Man. the way back to Lucy. And I mean, then he not Lucy. Lucy. Eve. <laughs> <laughs> to E. See her. Hey, not and then Lucy. he shows so much. Like when it comes to ancestry, that it's a headache, bro. Like that is a yeah. lot of lot of people. Yeah. A lot um, of people. We we're doing research right now to where we're trying to see. Mm -hmm. The person who was taken from Africa. Yeah, what Lucy came from. And here. Not Lucy. I know, I'm just picking with Not you. Not Lucy. I have to let you know that. Yeah, but we cool. almost there in our family tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We almost there, boo. But, um, yes, Eve, your, your churn out here cutting up, girl. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yep, they be cutting up in things. What a way to put it. They mad that, that they mad for a lot of things that, that you didn't pass down. <sighs> mm-hmm. All right. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> it's different. We look, we all related. Look at us. We over here fighting over toys and things. <laughs> yeah. So that's what, that much. was a cool video. Yeah, we hope thanks. you guys enjoyed it with us. Like this video, subscribe, turn on the post notification bell. We have enabled our super, super thanks. thanks. If you like to support the channel that way, as well as our reaction request form is in our description, description box below. below. We'll see you soon. Peace.